Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 5 of the late 40s Emerson 614. Today we're going to look at uh, one of the remaining problems that this set still has, which is an excessive amount of gain. Now, just about any signal you put into it, uh, it overloads the picture, uh, and so you have to turn the contrast all the way down so that this doesn't happen, then it makes it kind of a, a, a blurry, washed out picture. So we're going to take a look at the AGC circuits and see if we can't figure out a way to increase feedback to lower the gain and make this a much more watchable set. So the first thing we need to do is study the circuit and how it works so that we can better understand where to troubleshoot. Okay, so here's our IF and video section. So after the third IF, we come to the V4, which is our detector. Uh, half of it they use as an AGC and the other half they use as the detector diode. So if we go to the next page here uh, and we focus on this corner. So the way that it works is you have your detector diodes uh, <clears throat> and so the first one uh, which is the cathode of pin 5. In fact, we have to go back up again so that we can see that pin 5 uh, decouples to the plate of the second one, or the anode plate, same thing, uh, couples to the anode of the second one through this 30 picofarad capacitor. And then uh, what happens is, is that output, which then goes to the second diode, uh, also goes through this one meg resistor here, R17. And then what R7, the downside of R17 does is it is a feedback line here. And so it's going through R11 and it's going through R6, what it looks like. And so that feedback is changing the bias on the IF amplifiers, the first uh, and second video I amp amplifier. So that's your AGC loop right there. So my thought is, is that we're just, either the one meg resistor has gone up stupid high in value and it's now like, you know, three megs or four megs or something like that. Uh, or it's simply the design of the set that we need to add more feedback. But you see there, the R117 is a one meg and that's on V4, which is the detector. Uh, and let's look at where V4 is on the chart. And V4 is this guy right here in the middle of the chassis. So let's take a look at the components there and see what if that one meg resistor has gone way up, uh, or if it hasn't, check the 1K resistors that are in the feedback loop to the grids. And if that's all good, then maybe just experiment somewhat and uh, maybe up the feedback by changing the one meg to like, you know, an eight, a 680K or something and see how that goes down. And so it's really crammed in here. But this is our detector dial. This is our V4. And I'm looking for a feedback resistor. which should be on one of these guys. Let me just grab a meter here real quick and see if any of these measure anything. This one's to ground. 1.5K, which you can barely see there is brown, green, red. We have a 220K. which currently reads 2.3 meg, so that's not good. Let's see, is there any... There shouldn't be any voltage across this thing. It's been sitting forever. Yeah, there's no voltage across that. Okay, so the 220K resistor there is open. We'll have to see where that is in the circuit. And then, let me just look over my shoulder 
here and see if that is in fact, yeah, that's the detector diode right there. That is it. It's a very different layout than what I was expecting. Uh, and so let's measure this here, which looks like a 4, 4.7, that's at 5. And this one here, which is 100K, that's 100K, that's reading a meg. So, so far, this AGC circuit is just wonky, and I still haven't found the feedback resistor yet. We still need to look for the feedback resistor. Uh, let's see what pin that was on again. So, according to that, we should be seeing that one meg resistor on pin 7. But then there was this... Let's see here. And then, ugh. Yeah, where was that coming from? That 2.3 meg we saw. We have to make sure that that isn't coming off of, uh, that's also coming off of pin 7. That's just a voltage divider. Have I even got the right tube? I mean, that's... I'm not seeing what I should be seeing there. You know, let's let's take a look-see. Yeah, that's the right tube. That's the 6AL5. Okay, so maybe I'm just reading these color codes wrong. Because this is pin 7 here. And we have our 30 picofarad capacitor coupling to the second... Uh, to the second diode and then we also have this what measures to be 2.3 megs clearly that's yellow maybe it's supposed to have been green but it, it shows up to my eyes as yellow but if i measure it it's 2.2 uh 2.2 meg so that's correct and then also off pin 7 we have our 1 meg which is here this measures just a little over a meg so and then that uh, is then decoupled to ground by that 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Um, let's make sure that's correct. So that would be C80, so that looks okay. And then we just need to follow that 1 meg to see if it goes to the two 1Ks on the grids of the uh, IFs. And so coming back to this, our 1K, after being decoupled, goes down this green line here way down to this terminal strip here. And then I see two 1Ks there. There's one back here and then there's one right there. So let's measure those real quick and see if those are good. So if I come up to this first 1K here and we measure it, see that's gone way up, that's 2K. And then this other one here, which I may or may not be able to get to. That one still measures 1K. Make sure I got the right spot here. Yep, so there's that one. That one's 1K. But this other one back here is decidedly not 1K anymore, it's 2K. So that needs to be changed. But yeah, this, uh, this brown, black, what looks to be yellow here, That's shorting out against something. Let's make sure that's. Oh, let's make sure that that's good. Yeah, see, that measures a meg. And then this one up here, which looks like it should be 220K, is 2.3 megs. It's 2.4 and slowly decreasing, but that's those two are with intolerance. So the main ones there are cool. Uh, just for grins and giggles. Yeah, that 4.7 is like 5.5. 
So maybe, maybe that's a little high. Um, that would be over about 20%. So that's on the cusp, but that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna make it not work right. But here are our two I, first two IF amplifiers here. And I'll check these two while I'm at it. 37 out of 33 looks good. We got a 4.7K rating 5. That bumped that there. Let's see, there's another 1K. Still measures 1K. And another 1K here. Still measures 1K. So just that one resistor back there off the main bus is a little high. Now let's see, 5.6 rating, 5.9, that's probably fine. So definitely going to change the 1K back here. Uh, and then I think what I may do is lower this 1 meg to, let's say, 820K. Give it a little more feedback. Um, and then see, turn it on and see what our picture looks like and see if we've gotten a little bit better because uh, it was just overloading like crazy. And if we can get it not to overload on a regular signal, that's really my goal here, is to just make it watchable without having to constantly fiddle with the contrast control. So that's really my goal here, is to make it so that the, the owner doesn't have to fiddle with this thing. So let me change this guy out real quick. I'm going to have to put the camera aside because it's literally in the way of where I'm going to work. So, yeah, but we'll get back to that in just a little bit. All right, so we've got our 1K replaced here. And I'm going to change out our 1 mega ohm. And we're going to do a 820K. I'd be much more happy with that. Just gonna cut one side free. Trim this a little bit. Just so I can make a good strong connection. And then we'll unsolder this side. get something to fuel that up a little bit. Thankfully this doesn't have a bajillion connections attached to it. Otherwise I would probably just J-hook it because these old phenolic terminal strips are so fragile that if you get aggressive about desoldering and resoldering, uh, they get brittle. And they break and then when they do you're really hating yourself because now you have to replace the terminal strip or figure out some janky method of reconnecting everything that you just broke off so not really into that today and then we'll attach our put some fresh solder on this first of all get it ready Attach our, our one make here. And then come up here, make a little loop so that we can feed it on here. I'm just dropping everything today. And we'll place that loop on the existing lead. Again, you want a good solid connection, and then we'll solder it up. 
So that's our feedback resistor that's been slightly changed. And just to verify that I actually did put an 820K in there, I'm pretty sure I did. That's what it measured out of the bag. So there we go, 822. And we're going to see if the replacement 1K that was way off and the increased feedback from the lowered feedback resistor value is going to get us a better looking picture with less overloading. So let's give it a shot. All right, everything's should be ready to go. Let's light her off and see what happens. Let me turn the camera flash off. Let's hear high voltage. There we go. That's with the contrast all the way up. All right, so let's turn that down a bit. If you overload it, if you turn the contrast all the way up, you're going to overload it just because of the way it's driven. But really, I'm looking for about a midpoint of contrast ratio that doesn't overload the set. Yeah, that AOC diode definitely has to definitely has to go. It's way too touchy. Good looking picture. It's not overloading too badly. Ooh wee, look at that. Yeah, that AOC diode's just done. Very soft lock, very touchy. But it's better. I could probably give it more feedback, but I don't really need to. But it's got a decent looking picture on it. These will never be super bright like we're used to because these only run at about 8 kilovolts, so it's not going to be bright. Many people watch these in a dimly lit room because it just wasn't that bright. Uh, we're supposed to back off on the brightness until the retrace goes away. That's about your correct point. But it's got a pretty good video response. We need to work on the horizontal drive and stuff because it's obviously not quite right. But it's not overloading on every single picture now, which is good. Doesn't overload on the menu. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're definitely off center. That's a lot better there. I don't want to move the ring too much because then we have problems with shadowing. Even a 
minimize shadows and get it centered in there as much as possible. So that's pretty good. That's just in the 4x3 and we can expand that a little bit. So this is doing much better now. I think what we're going to do is focus on the uh, drive. In fact, let's get it on a let's get it on a signal generator. So as you can see, we've got some horizontal linearity issues, and that's a drive adjustment. Uh, let me see where that is on the back panel since it's not very well not very well labeled. Bear with me a second here. Uh, horizontal drive is going to be right at the end here. We can see that that definitely affects it somewhat. Too much drive and we get a massive nonlinearity. And then there is a fine horizontal drive adjustment. This could be a little bit more stretched. The drive really adjusts the left side and the horizontal linearity adjusts the right. And let's see here. It's a little bit out of focus too. Just looking for the finest vertical retrace there. Or vertical lines. Uh, so the this should be interesting because the camera is kind of in my way So let me reposition things and I'll see if I can I may have to hold it in my hands to adjust the right side linearity here But let me do that Because the control is way back here and yes that is upside down But I need to get to that While I'm wa watching it on the screen So I'm going to try adjusting it here That's not, not really doing much. And that's me messing with the adapter again. Got a little bit of blooming too. In fact, a lot of blooming. I wonder if that rectifier's, high voltage rectifier is getting a little tired. Uh, let's see if I can toy around with that. That really didn't do much, did it? All right, well, after messing with the two, uh, both the linearity and the drive, this is about as good as it gets. I can't seem to get this side uh, straightened out. And if you're wondering, yes, all the little small value caps in the horizontal are already changed out, so those are all new. And uh, it could just be a defect in the coil, because when I found it, it was, like, really backed out. So... But otherwise, uh, it's looking pretty good. We're going to change that 6AL5 out. And then uh, I think button this one up. Um, I thought about changing one of the electrolytics that was still there. So I may still do that. But all of the cans are still running cool as ice. Uh, and all but like one section of one can was replaced. So maybe I'll just do that for reliability's sake. After it warms up, it's okay, but when it's cold, that 6AL5 is touching. Still, I have some pretty soft horizontal lock. It's just really kind of touchy, so I think we're going to make it... Uh, we're going to make it a little more stable. 
and then we'll double check our picture again. So there's our old 6AL5, which someone's replaced already with a GE. Actually, no, it's an RCA. So let's change this out to something and see if that improves our touchiness any. And on the left, we have a Sylvania to install in its place. And it's definitely tight in here. So I'm not really fond of this setup, but I can see why they put it in the cage because they don't want other people messing with the high voltage tubes. So we'll just insert all of this, hook it back up, and we'll put our cage back on. And then Let's see here. Let's fire this up again and see how it behaves with a new detector diode in. I'm going to assume a lot different, but we really don't know yet. Here's our high voltage. All right, well, it locked in straight away. Got a lot more range, for sure. Definitely a lot more stability there. Cool, man. Let's uh, switch back to regular TV and see how we're doing. Yeah, much better. We have a much more pronounced range now. And when it locks in, it's pretty much there. The pot could use a little bit of cleanup. But that looks good. Uh, let's see here. What did I just do? I have lost vertical. There we go. Still got a little bit of overloading, although we do have the contrast like way up. See, when you crank the contrast, it doesn't get brighter like it does on more modern sets. It's just a, a greater difference between light and dark and you get overloading. So basically you want to back it off until you just start to see a noticeable difference in contrast. And again, we want to turn the brightness down until the retrace just goes away. And then set our contrast ratio just until it starts overloading and then back it off some. Until we get a nice picture. And that's looking pretty good. Set was built in 1949. I'm not going to expect the same performance out of one made in 1970. But it's pretty good looking. It's got decent video response. We still got a little bit of twitch there, but nothing like the old 6AL5. I think it's just going to be one of those quirks that it has. So this thing's looking really good now. Just always got that little bit of twitch, which eventually goes away after warm-up. Jiggling any of these IF tubes doesn't really change anything. Detector tube, nope. Yeah, it's not a loose connection or a bad socket or anything. But I'm happy with how this one turned out. This one turned out really good. I didn't think it was going to... Uh, didn't think it was going to come back. This one's doing all right. So now I think it's time for some good long burn-in. 
and uh, just run it for a week or so and see if it's really truly happy and if it is uh, return it to its owner Just getting that picture perfect that's tricky. But yeah, she's looking good. So let's get it back in the cabinet and see how it looks. Alright, well here she is all back together. And I found some retaining hardware for the knobs because they were just kind of loose and sloppy. This one is a little bit, but it's on there, at least not falling off. And this one even has the back. Ooh. So, uh, when I get a free moment, we'll hook this back up in the test area and just let it bake for a little bit. And uh, if everything's cool after some days, then uh, we'll button it back up. And Well, it's already buttoned back up. And we'll give it back to its owner. Well, here she is all back together and working. It's been running for about two days now, and it's not had a hiccup. So I'm going to run it maybe another day or so, and then it goes back to its owner. So hope you guys enjoyed this series, and uh, thanks for watching. More stuff to come.